lots and lots of families are just going to really, really struggle. Back from his holiday and straight into the spotlight, the Labour leader Keir Starmer launched his energy plan today, telling consumers in Exeter that if he were in government, he wouldn't let them pay a penny more on their winter fuel bills. We have a choice. We either allow the oil and gas companies to continue to make huge profits whilst every family suffers, or we do something about it. Their answer, freezing prices. The energy price cap is currently set at £1,971, but is forecast to hit nearly £4,000 in October and potentially rising again as soon as January. Under Labour's plan, the cap would stay at the current level until March, saving the average family £1,000. Labour says, all in all, this will cost £29 billion. Labour's proposals uh, support everybody and they ensure that uh, the very richest pay no more for their energy and also that the very poorest pay no more for their energy. That's why it's so expensive. There are clearly choices here. This would almost certainly need to be extended beyond six months, given that energy prices aren't going to collapse in six months' time, so it does become extremely expensive. Now, we've only just spent a huge amount on uh, supporting the economy and supporting people through COVID. There comes a point at which you have to say that we can't continue to do that. Labour say they have costed this through extending a windfall tax on energy companies, dropping the energy rebate, and they say their plans will reduce inflation, leading to a cut in interest payments on government debt. The result of this plan is that it will, uh, according to our analysis, it will see a, a cut in inflation of around four percentage points. And that's really important because we know that inflation uh, is one of the key uh, drivers of kind of economic instability in the economy at the moment. We will still see businesses and others facing uh, rising uh, inflation and that will also be passed on to consumers. So it's not a catch-all solution. The government has already announced £37 billion of support, but the chief executive of Scottish Power, who attended a meeting with Boris Johnson along with other energy bosses last week, said he hoped the government would double this support to help households pay these impossible bills. Bills some consumers say they simply won't pay. 100,000 people already signing up to the Don't Pay campaign. We're asking people to join us now, to stand together, to be counted and to show government and energy companies that, you know, we, ca we can't pay um, and we won't pay if they don't do anything about it. Your campaign is asking people to break their contracts with energy companies that they've already had. Do you think that is risky? I think, um, you know, that's a last resort. In fact, I would argue all people would prefer just to pay their way to honour their contracts that they sign. So people are doing this out of desperation? People are doing saying. this out of desperation. Frustrated with what they call a frozen government, the campaign say the leaders in waiting haven't given them sufficient answers either. Rishi Sunak has committed to giving more emergency support payments, although he's not said how much, and he says he will suspend VAT on energy bills for a year. His rival, Liz Trust, prefers to do this through tax cuts, reversing the planned rise in national insurance and by removing green levies on energy bills. Both plans aren't yet costed, but the candidates say they'll give more details at a later stage. Silence too from the two leadership candidates on the Labour leaders' energy plans today. As one Prime Minister prepares to go, it seems no detail on further help till the next one moves in. Well, when I spoke to the Labour leader, Sir Keir Starmer, earlier, I started asking him why his pledge wasn't better targeted at those who needed help the most. Well, millions of people are going to really struggle this winter because, as you know, the price cap currently about just under £2,000 is going to go to £3,500 in October, then to £4,200 in January of next year. That's a massive increase in the energy bills, and that is going to impact on every house. Well, not the very, the, the very the, richest can manage that, though. Well, can. many, many families and many households can't. They're really struggling. I've been talking to people here in Exeter of very different backgrounds, but everybody is impacted. But the benefit of our scheme is, one, it answers the question, what will you do to keep the energy prices down this uh, year, which people can't afford? But secondly, what are you going to do about inflation? Because our plan brings inflation down by 4%, and we have to grip inflation as well. So that's why we've gone for an across-the-board approach. Within that, there is targeting. So 
Um, the government announced £650 for those on universal credit and for pensioners. And we would keep that while scrapping other parts of the government scheme. And secondly, four million households are on prepayment metres. They're often the ones struggling the most. Mm. And they pay an even higher premium. And we say that's immoral and it's got to go. Do you accept, given the scale of this crisis, you might need to extend it beyond six months? Well, this answers the question, what will you do this winter? Uh, in relation to those price hikes. We're not going to allow the increase to happen. Mm. And we say it's the oil and gas companies in the North Sea that are making huge profits who, who ought to pay a windfall tax to enable us to do that. And that's but the if there was a snap election making. and a Labour government, you accept this is bound to go beyond six months? There are bound to be problems um, in April. Um, obviously, we'll need to look at what the forecasts are then. It's one of the reasons that almost a year ago I said we need some medium and long-term answers as well. One of the most pressing is insulating homes. There are 19 million homes that are paying massive bills for their energy, and that energy is escaping because they're not properly insulated. Well, some in your party wanted you to do something very different. Did you at least look at the former Prime Minister Gordon Brown's proposals for temporary nationalisation of these companies. I, I asked my team two months ago to come up with a plan to freeze the uh, increase in prices, which is what we've done, and to fully cost it. Now, but did course, you look at temporary nationalisation? In, in the course of that, we looked at what the available options are. And that in was the one end, option? The, the choice we made was this. Every penny, every penny of that £29 billion that we've announced ago goes towards reducing the bills for households. Every single penny goes to reducing the bills. So you if looked at if temporary nationalisation? If we'd gone to the nationalisation route, um, then money would then have had to be spent on compensating shareholders. Now, I think if I'd come out this morning and said to struggling households, um, I can't really help you with your bills because I'm going to use money to compensate shareholders instead. They would have said, you don't understand the pressure that I'm under. So did you make the wrong choice when you said, as one of your ten pledges in your leadership campaign for Labour leader, uh, that you supported common ownership of rail, mail, energy and water? You don't anymore. So was that wrong when you said I'm, that? I'm completely pragmatic about this. Um, not ideological about it. And what I've had to do is to look at what are the options available to us within the financial constraints that we've got, particularly since the pandemic. So it was a pragmatic a, pledge to win the leadership and you now junked it. Well, look, we, we have to answer the question, what are you going to do about the soaring energy costs for people this winter? I've answered that question. And yes, I've made a decision that we, we should use every penny on reducing those bills. We've so been once through you bagged the leadership, you we, thought, that policy, I'm going to be pragmatic, pragmatic about it, I'm going to dump it. Well, look, since then, we've been through COVID. We've got an international situation with Ukraine, which nobody predicted. We're in, a, in an emergency situation. And I've made the choice that every penny of our costed plan should go on reducing the bills and not compensating shareholders. Do you have sympathy with people who are refusing to pay more than they're currently paying for their energy um, and joining this movement, don't pay UK? Do you have sympathy with them? Well, their challenge really is to say we need something to ensure that these prices don't go up because we can't afford to pay them. Uh, I think that that's a good challenge. My answer to that challenge is to put forward a comprehensive plan that says we will not Labour will not allow these price rises to take place in the first place. So people no longer need to join that Don't Pay UK movement if there was a Labour government, that worry would be removed? Well, yes, because the answer we've got to that is we don't want to see those price rises in the first place. And that's why we've got this costed plan to keep the prices down, not allow those increases to happen, but at the same time have an answer to the question, what are you going to do about inflation, which of course is, is getting increasingly out of control. There are more rail strikes coming yeah. this week. Do you support front benches now joining the picket lines, even though you warned them not to earlier in the summer? The reason I've said um, that we shouldn't be on the picket line is because uh, I want a Labour government um, and if you're in government, if I'm the Prime Minister, sitting around the Cabinet table, can't have a, my job and the Labour government's job is to resolve these issues uh, and make sure that actually uh, those on strike don't lose out, those people who need higher wages get those higher wages, and that we don't have the disruption. So that's the role of the government. And you can't sit around the Cabinet table and then go to a picket line. Who's the easier opponent, Liz Truss or Rishi Sunak? Look, I don't really mind which of them wins this race. Um, we've got two candidates who are involved in an internal fight 
Most of that fight involves trashing their own record. They're really saying, vote for me, because things are so terrible uh, after the last 12 years of Tory uh, leadership. And, and frankly, the change we need for this country is not a change of leadership at the top of the Tory party. They're the problem. They're not the solution. What we need is a change of government, a Labour government. And under me, the Labour Party is ready for an election, ready to win an election, and ready to govern. And that's the fresh start we need for our country. So just finally, if there is a snap election in the coming weeks, which is quite possible, what's your slogan for that? election? Uh, well, the first thing I'd say before I get to the slogan, slogan is, is bring it on. The slogan will be, vote Labour, we're on your side, reboot the economy, revitalise our public services and bring the country together. Might be subbed down by the election, but... It so might Ke be. So, Keir Starmer, <laughs> thanks very much.